Uh, word can talk. I've never done this before, uh, so bear with me. If I'm nervous or talk too fast, uh, just slow me down. If you have any questions, just um, go ahead. You can ask them uh, uh, just right when you when they pop in your mind. And uh, I'm going to be talking about a um, a passion of mine within WordPress. So, and uh, it's been a, a thing that I actually started doing first when I started using WordPress. So, um, right after creating my first theme, I would um, start playing with the, the new functionality of that time, which was uh, the ability to add widgets or any basically anything that is not content to your site and uh, uh, attach it to whichever page you want. And uh, before using WordPress, I actually used Drupal for at least three, pro three projects, and it had this um, really nice functionality where you could uh, specify the pages uh, where your widgets are shown. So I kind of, um, first, when I, when I started using WordPress, I was uh, looking for that, the same functionality, and that was not there. Uh, so uh, this is when my passion uh, or my work with uh, related to widgets started. But before that, um, I'm going to take uh, a quick introduction to myself so that you have some background. I actually am trained um, as an engineer because it's a passion of my family. So my father is a race car driver and then a race car builder as well. So this is me, uh, the first car competing in the uh, Latvian Autocross Championship in 2007, which is the year that I won. Uh, so I got the, the, the big uh, cup. Um, and this is the electric car that we built last year. And we went to the Rally Dakar and uh, it's uh, a fully electric uh, car and we finished the rally. Uh, and then it's uh, 8,400 kilometers. Uh, two weeks of race, and I was there um, as a support uh, engineer and uh, riding in this big truck uh, along the, the same route. Uh, and, the, the, and in a moment, you'll see how it ties to uh, the story of WordPress in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I started using WordPress in 2007, um, which is uh, quite a bit a while ago. Uh, as I said, I, I, I've learned and done uh, HTML and PHP before that. And it was basically table layouts, all that raw stuff that I think uh, like a lot of you have started with. So, um, and uh, it started with building themes. So this is one of the first themes that I built. And I obviously uh, didn't want to, because I looked at like, at the time we had Kubrick, right? It's for, it's like for in infinity in, in, in the core. And there's probably no other look you could get by default. So I really was interested at that, uh, at changing the look of how my blog would look. Uh, so I started building the themes and it was already at the time when uh, you had the, the, the sidebar and widget functionality in core which was around WordPress 2.2 I think when it was introduced and this is the uh, admin layout of that time and you would add this is actually the, the widget administration screen of uh, um, in uh, WordPress 2.2 and uh, you had it basically resembles the, the same functionality as it is today but you had this pop-up window where you would customize the things instead of having the drop-downs on the right-hand side. And um, so this is the layout as it was. And uh, if you remember at that time, you couldn't add multiple instances of the same widget. So if you had text widget, you would have to specify how many text widgets do you want. And it was down there at the page. So you would have to kind of, it was not that intuitive um, at that time. And uh, so this is when the idea of the, the showing those widgets in context and in only on certain sections of the pages was born. And this is the layout uh, of the very first, I think it was never released at this uh, stage, of the UI that I added with my plugin to every widget. And I have to say that it was really hard to do that at that time because you didn't have an action or a filter. Uh, so you couldn't really uh, hook into this admin screen for each of the widgets. So it was really hard to just put whatever you want in the footer of every widget. What you had to do was you had to go through the defined widgets, uh, over at the function that was called in the, in the administration area, and then within your new function you had to call the previous function. So it was a really hacky way of like, uh, doing this. And uh, so to understand like, my frustration with widgets, and as it stands now, I think I need to first uh, talk about the sidebar or the, the history of the sidebar. And it's been a, a long, uh, long time story in terms of, uh, in the world of blogging, it, it's been like, in, I think the first templates that were uh, developed by uh, both uh, the blogger and the other uh, blogging software that was out there at the time. 
And it kind of makes sense to have this sidebar idea because it's always related, it's the content that's related to your blog. And your blog is just entries, or chronological entries about whatever happens in your life or the topic you're passionate about. So it kind of always, uh, that sidebar thing is attached to your content and it always makes sense. But when you start to build websites that are no more just blogs that have sections of, let's say, company uh, founders, uh, you probably don't want that uh, blog calendar next to the founders photos, right? So at that point, you kind of start realize that that one side that one sidebar uh, principle doesn't apply anymore, and you want to do something about it. Uh, so this is the the very the the the, the, the last theme that is in WordPress core. This is twenty twelve. And you can see that it still has the sidebar thing, right, by default. So it's a kind of a good concept, and it's carried along because it works and it has a purpose. Um, but still, uh, they they're meant to be used for related content, and putting everything in one sidebar doesn't make sense, neither for you nor your users. Um, so widgets in core they were introduced in 2.2, uh, and uh, one of the thir first things before. Uh, doing the widget con uh, context plugin that I did was um, I created actually uh, f functional wrappers that you could uh, basically create a widget out of any plugin that provided a function. So and uh, that was the first plugin that I released in the WordPress repository in 2000, I think eight, something like that. And uh, so, but there's the, still the problems are the following, right? Uh, that the widgets they are attached, they're not attached to your content. So if it's the about page, you don't want to see that and from the user's perspective, the, the common question that we get when we work with clients is that, how do we edit that thing on the right-hand side? Because they assume that it's either hard-coded or that it's somewhere like magically hidden because it's not when they click on the edit button, which is really prominently placed on the top of the, of the page, right? So um, I was trying to think that we should somehow solve this, right? Like it shouldn't be a question. Uh, the current so the, the options that you have is to use, is to use multiple templates. So in each template, you would specify uh, a different sidebar, and then the user would have to know that the about us sidebar is used uh, in for that template. And you, when you write a post or page, you have to apply that template to the page. And again, this is a principle that you and uh, I understand, but telling it to a client and like asking them to remember this workflow after half a year, after you've launched the site, it's not going to work. Uh, so the second option is to use a plugin. And uh, there are many plugins out there that help you kind of take control of your widgets. And uh, the, the oldest one being the widget logic, I think. And it's a really, really simple idea is that you have your widget, right? And you have this text area. It's just a, like a, just a text area and you have to be able to specify using code where you want this widget to show. Uh, and again, it doesn't really, it solves the problem for me and you. It doesn't solve the problem for the larger audience, like the WordPress, uh, the, yeah, the, like the users, regular users. Um, there's Woo sidebars, which adds even another section in your WordPress admin area that says basically, okay, Instead of having te using templates, you're gonna have you define custom sidebars for whatever sections uh, of the site that you want. And then when you edit that uh, edit that page, uh, you, you can like later on when you come back to the screen, and then you can say that this sidebar is either visible or not, and it, it's replacing that the uh, one of the original sidebars that are defined in your templates. Like for me, this was really hard to understand when I first installed the plugin. So it, it kind of works. It, uh, it has a different uh, approach to it that it uh, it's no longer in the widget uh, administration area. It's in a separate page in the backend. But I think it adds more confusion uh, than actually solves the problem. So uh, yeah, this is just uh, you would when you finally go to the widget area where you're supposed to add those widgets, you get this infinite amount of sidebars, and you have to kind of your client or yourself have to realize like which is showed and when. So you don't have this like this this the context is separated from the, the content in the sidebar. Um, there's another one which is display widgets. Um, what that does is uh, really simple. So it adds the, the the conditional logic to each of the widgets in the footer. It does exactly the same what my uh, plugin does and uh, just a different layout basically. 
the problem with this is again is that it just uh, so this is my plugin. It has this long weird thing uh, with the added bonus of target by URL. So it supports uh, wildcards. So you could say uh, if you don't want to like show a widget on the the calendar widget for the blog, you don't want to show it on about us pages. You would just put about us slash asterisk and then say uh, hide on selected. So that would hide it on that section, but would show it the other uh, the other locations on your site. Uh, so, but there, like all these solutions, have the same problem. So you can't edit that sidebar still in your page edit screen, and you can't reorder those widgets per page. So if I wanted to hide a widget on a certain section of the uh, of the site, I can do it. But if I want to show it and put it on the top. You can't really do it. You have to create another sidebar. You have to create a copy of the same set of widgets and then replace them. So it's not going to work. So I sat down, I think, two years ago, and I thought, okay, let's redo this widget context plugin and make it awesome. And it's been two years. I've created three versions, uh, three new versions, and three new different layouts and like approaches to the same problem. So I'm going to give you. Uh, an uh, overview of how they work and how they look. So they're all working prototypes. You can get all, uh, get all of them on Git, uh, on GitHub, on my account. So you can actually install them and play with them and see how they work. Uh, there are some problems like uh, some things may break, but still kind of works. So the concept number one was that let's bring the widgets to the edit screen, right? Because this is where I would be looking for the, the content because it should be attached to the whatever I'm viewing, right? Uh, and the, the concept is very simple. So you get, this is the, the page edit screen. On the right hand side, you have all your sidebars. Uh, and what you can do is you can uh, hide widgets and reorder widgets per page basis. That means you have to have proper titles for your widgets so you can really understand which widget really you want to like hide or which one you you want to reorder. But the problem with this is that mm, if you add a new widget, you have to go through all the pages and hide them or show them again. So it's really kind of messy. Um, and I'm going to show you a demo with that. So I have a multi-site with three sites with different concepts. So concept A, right? Let's say I go to the sample page here. So I have no widgets there. When I click on edit page where you would expect the things to be. This is a different. I stopped the, the titles, so it's probably a different concept here. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. Um, here. So the same sample page, edit page. There you go. So a simple thing, right? Widget settings, all your widgets. You're seeing the default layout that you have defined in the in the in the in the sidebar. Widget config screen basically, and what you can do is you can okay, let's say I'm I'm, I'm going to customize the, the sidebar for this page, so I'm enabling the customization. I'm saying okay, I don't want to see the search doesn't really matter, archive doesn't matter. This one I want to leave the meta for some reason and put it on top. Boom, you're done, and um, you update it. See it's still enabled. Meta is on top. These buttons don't work. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but you can uh, feel that you feel, you feel that the, the idea, right? Because it's yeah. on that same screen, so it can, uh, it's simple. You just click around the same page. You don't have to like think about it. Um, that's concept A, title B. <laughs> um, all right. And then I was like, okay, that's not enough, right? Um, let's take the original idea of having the the thing in the in the widget uh, admin screen, and like for each widget, we add this visibility setting thing. And instead of having uh, these checkboxes and things like that, we hide everything and we say, we give this, this little thing where you can add as many rules of when it's visible or shown or hidden, the widget. And uh, it's kind of nice, it works really nice. So 
this I'm gonna show the demo of this one so you can uh, get the feel for that uh, that should be concept A and uh, widgets so this time you don't go into the page so you still have to kind of explain your client that you will have to go into this widget page and do it from there so it's really easy and like simple it doesn't have it doesn't add a bloat to your widget screens it's like a, this nice icon right so you can kind of hide it you don't see it by default so you can edit your widgets first and then if you worry about this you just click this open you see it so the principle again is really simple you see this is based on rules so you you'll be able to you'll be able to kind of define what you want right where you want to show it or hide it so you just add a new rule say show this widget on a blog index page so let's say and then you want to see not only on the blog index page you see you want to see it on archive pages as well right so you say show on all po uh, all post type archive that wouldn't be that on all posts and categories so that would be not only archive pages like when you when it lists the posts but uh, on the posts that is in a specific category and then you can choose which category you want so if you had like let's say you had a, a, a blog about uh, WordPress and then you would write about Google and SEO bad example but a lot of people seem to do it uh, and uh, so you would sh you see what you would want to do uh, what you want to show ads for those people because they're probably uh, whatever reason they like clicking on ads and they expect like some place to give you money right so uh, so you would show this widget which would be titled like my ads on uncategorized or this like that would be something else right and the cool thing about this one is that you add those rules you can combine the show and hide principles so you can show on the front page or show on all everywhere but hide on all posts in this category it's kind of nice, but you have to kind of plan ahead of your, what's your strategy going to be. You can reorder these rules because there are some really edge case scenarios where you um, want to have the priorities set. And uh, it gets really complicated, trust me. I've thought about this really hard. And uh, like showing or adding a feature like this for, for showing things on, like adding a rule for uh, specific posts. Uh, is it here? It's not here. No, it has a specific post. And then you would have to go have like an interface for, for searching posts and searching pages. And you would have a list here. And then at the end, you kind of end up with the same thing when you don't really know what's going on. So it's not working really well. But that's a cool concept, I think. It's just a uh, different, the like UI is a bit different than we used to be uh, seeing. And the third one, is concept C, which is the one that I've been working on the last, I would say, three weeks, I guess, is we again, we move back into the post editor. And, uh, but this time, not only are we gonna allow users to edit the widgets there or configure their layout, we're gonna allow them to add new widgets. So my suggestion is let's forget about this widget screen. Let's like, let's not do it. Because you can, the widgets are, they're really essential to your content. And all your content should be in one place when, like, from the user's perspective. And I think I've come to a uh, really nice layout for this. And again, this is just a screenshot, but I'm going to show you a demo version of this. It works. And uh, there's some uh, problems with adding new widgets because this post screen is a whole, like a big form, giant form. And everything that you put in there has to be belong to that form, so you can't put a form inside a form. So adding a new widget involves adding a title for the widget and all the config options and things like that. So uh, that's a, like a technical difficulty to turn this into a working uh, example and have it uh, run on the existing setups without some really weird JavaScript mockery of like moving forms away and just inserting them for a temporary time and things like that. So it really kind of this one is the least finished, but again, it works. Um, there we go, concept C, was it? So we're returning to this concept of in-context editing. So as a user, I just want to say, change things here, right? 
So I'll click edit page because it makes sense. I have my all my sidebars listed like this. So if I don't do anything, it sh like currently it shows what I have defined in the widgets uh, admin area. But what I can do is I can add existing widgets. So when I notice that when I click on add widget, it just it happens here. So you don't see you don't have a pop up, you don't have a screen. You just use using the CSS uh, three for for this kind of layout. So. You can, uh, it's very simple and intuitive. What you do is, uh, let's say we want to add the search. So we added the search right here. That's nice. Uh, let's say we want to add something else in here. What do you notice that search is gone from here, right? Because you've used that in the sidebar. So you can't really use it again because you're going to have uh, CSS conflicts on the front end. And basically it wouldn't work. So I'm adding it here. Here. And then you would have, just like when you add a new screen, you have this here. You would have all the available widgets list here. And you could click and expand and add new, uh, a new widget. So you, would have, you, you wouldn't have to go to the widgets admin screen to actually add new content to your site, which makes sense. So yeah, uh, that's the latest concept. The adding new widget from scratch doesn't work because of the, it actually did work as it would show something. I have it working because, I, but I removed it because it, it wasn't finished, so it didn't really make sense. Um, but this is something that I think it's worth considering going forward because then we would have all the widgets on, uh, on your, in like shown in context. The obvious problem with this is that you, if, so I have, this is the three concepts, right? Uh, let's go back here. And the, the, so the conclusions are the following. The current setup where we have a separate section in the, in the admin backend for adding and configuring widgets, they don't al allow you to have this granular control over what happens in which section of your site. And the granular setup, however, the things that I've, when I move stuff to, page set, uh, to the page edit screen, right, it's really hard to manage that on a larger scale because if you have a site with 5,000, um, pages or whatever, even a thousand or a hundred pages, adding a new widget means that you have to go to all those pages when you want to add something and add it. It kind of makes sense from the user's perspective because if we say that we're going to start with a blank slate by default and if that is the, like, the starting point, it's really to understand, it's easy to kind of accept that and work with it. But there might be cases when having a, this, using only this granule setup uh, where you have everything in the page set up, uh, page edit screen, it wouldn't work on a larger scale. So you kind of have to have the combination of uh, both, of, both of these solutions, the, 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 the sidebar thing and the, uh, the post context screen. The problem is that I still haven't found a, like a, a, a I don't have a working uh, prototype for that. I just think that the direction is there and uh, I should be continuing working on that. So my, my suggestion is that bring widgets to post edit screen and make the widget editing actually a priority for core as well because that is one aspect that hasn't been touched for a while ever since I think moving to the new design and new admin screen, the, the widget admin screen changed I think there's nothing, there's very few uh, things have been implemented there is the, uh, the, the filters have been added in the, uh, in the, so you can add these context screens to all of the widget uh, edit areas but apart from that it's Pretty been it's been a kind of a, a, a child left alone and like nobody really cares about it. Yet I think it's a really uh, important usability issue uh, that is currently in WordPress. So my suggestion is, yeah, we should work in this. So uh, thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to ask. You mean on the post on the edit screen, post edit screen or the yeah. yeah you can do that there's a filter for that can you repeat repeat oh the yeah the, the question was can you enable um, the the widget editing screen for certain post types and the answer is yes because in theory it's just a matter of uh, adding a rule to uh, to the to the to the set of available rules 
And all of these that I showed in the example, where is this? No, I have it here. See this drop, this drop down. This is I have like core for features right added in my plugin. The theory is that you can easily just add your own rules. The obvious problem is like as I said, the, the like which rule gets applied first. And it, let's say if you specify, I don't want to see this widget on a post type uh, portfolio. But then again, you decide I want to see it on this specific entry on my portfolio. It's really hard to uh, say like which rule should work first and be applied first uh, programmatically. So that's a bit of a hard thing. But uh, I have I'm using the the regular filter uh, waterfall like idea principle. So that if you hook something uh, up further in the top, it gets executed uh, later. If it's if it sinks down, it, it is done applied later on. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, you're adding it to the post edit screen, and that covers like pages and posts and custom post mm -hmm. names. What about the other pages in WordPress that aren't post posts? Awesome Can question. Or awesome, awesome question. Okay. <laughs> repeat. I, repeat. Trust me, I like I've thought about repeat. it. Repeat. Yeah, the the, uh, the repeat. Um, so what happens when uh, category archive pages, let's say, and all this other stuff that is not posts or page in WordPress? And uh, the answer is that if we're using the, the principle of um, the, even like whatever admin screen you have, we can put it in the category admin screens. And for the concept, for one of the concepts I have it running, so I'm going to show you if you want to see that. Anybody wants to yeah. see that? Yeah. Yes. All right. There you go. So I'm on a category. And there you have the sidebar rules. The obvious problem is like we have archives or URLs for archives of a specific date, month, year. And we don't have an UI in the back end for that. So, again, you kind of end up with a, there is no bulletproof <coughs> approach to this. Uh, but this was my try on doing that. So, yeah. Would it be possible to uh, make, uh, make it so that you can actually uh, edit the widgets, both in the widget screen and on the pages, so that you can yeah, that was the concept of this actually. So, this was previously a one plugin <coughs> that I decoupled. So, you would have. So we have we would but we would the the, the principle would be the, the the concept would be the following. So we have this on the widget admin screen, right? And this wouldn't have this, uh, where was it? So you see, you can't on specific posts or pages. It doesn't have it. It says, visibility settings for specific posts or pages can be set when editing the post or page. So it's even there. It's a drop down and it gives you a help message. Mm -hmm. And then you would use this. So you can't edit this. OK, you realize, OK, I have to go to the post or right, page edit screen for this. And uh, you would go to the other UI that I showed you previously, right? So that was my initial plan. The problem, however, is again, you have this uh, post and page visibility rules set, let's say, in a post meta. But these are stored, you can't really attach them anywhere. So they must be stored in the option somewhere. <coughs> and then on the lookup, when you finally view a certain page or post on an archive page, you kind of have to go through all these rules, see what's here, and then also check the, the individual page or post, right? And then kind of combine them, and it's really uh, it was hard to do. So I kind of ended up splitting them, and my idea was that if you're running a really complex site, you would install this version, whatever Widget Context Pro, right? This gives you this that has you probably don't like you wouldn't give access to this to your uh, client because it's a uh, weird rules would be here, and what you give to your client would be the the simple thing in the post and page edit screens, so. That was putting the idea. Okay. 
Um, I have a terrible time finding WordPress widgets for other languages, mm -hmm. or even so. I need it in Bangla, which is a language in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's like it doesn't exist, or it's not a good guide for it. Have you thought about creating like a Udemy course that for beginners who have all these questions? Because the slides could become like a beginning course on Udemy or. On you mean like translations as in of the widget content? So it's like I have two part question I guess. Okay. One question is, uh, lang widgets in other languages, mm -hmm. uh, but the help, all the you know, visibility settings, it displays the help tips in that language. Sure. Uh, in the right formatting. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't found a good way to integrate that in the back end, or even have all the things that we do in English. Mm -hmm. On the on the back end, happen in another language. Yeah, there there are. So it's very simple. The answer to this is very simple. There are WordPress provides that functionality, so you can have. If I created this widget, uh, sorry, this plugin, it actually has all the filters and hooks in place, so that people can uh, use uh, and translate the plugin. So if you would use it to whatever in whatever you like, if you had your WordPress running in uh, that language, and if I had that that translation file in my plugin uh, in, in the folder there. You would automatically pick it up, so you would have it in uh, in your own uh, native language. Okay. A second question was for mm -hmm. beginners. Widgets are one of those hurdles. Yes. <laughs> it looks really, as you said, hacky way. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, wondering if you can offer maybe a Udemy free course for beginners. Just take these slides and put it up and. They're gonna be up. They're not up yet, but uh, it's uh, yeah. I'll definitely do that because uh, I think people have to know. And even if you guys, you're probably using some other plugins for controlling the widgets. So if you have any suggestions or things that you've used, uh, I'm pretty like, you should probably, I don't know, scream it out now or just tweet me and then I'll post it in my blog. We can do it that way. But I think there are just, uh, there are many solutions out there and uh, a lot of people are looting, uh, using different things. So um, yeah, this is, as I said, a, neg a little bit neglected area of WordPress and it's been left to plugins uh, for a long time. So they're sprung up a lot of there, there are many plugins out there that do this thing so uh yeah just tweet treat me or email me and i'll post it up on the board. <laughs> say again so okay thank you very much enjoy the rest of the evening